guys I am so excited to bring you guys another job that we're gonna do let me show you guys what the damages are if you look around you'll see this roof looks pretty okay I mean a little bit of standing water here a little bit of standing water around the around the scuppers I mean obviously I had to come back here because the roof was leaking so there's two scuppers the roof faces this direction with the big cricket which is that angle part that pushes the water into the scuppers now I was called in because they kept on having leaks and when I first showed up, there was another roofing company already here trying to fix the problem. As you can see, we have a patch here with some kind of tar. A lot of things have been done here. And the minute I got up on top of this roof after they had left, the minute I got here, I knew exactly what the problem was because I came right to this corner right here. What I did is I came here and all I did was this. I go, oh, I know what the problem is. Put it down and I got off the roof. The customer's like, are you sure you know? I'm like, I'm a thousand percent sure I know. I, I can't even stress this enough how bad this is is that whoever put this roof on did not understand how TPO works. And what I mean by that is, this is a really nice looking roof, but it's a very bad performing roof. The number one problem I found here is that when I ripped this patch up, come in real close. This you really gotta see. This I gotta show you guys. If I go like this and the glue comes off and it's a clear or yellow glue, there's something wrong because it's hard to show you guys, but this is reinforced TPO. And reinforced TPO can only be welded. There's no other way to do it. There's no peel and stick mem membrane that can waterproof itself to itself. I'm surprised they got it to not leak for three years. Three years. It's outrageous how much money they spent on this entire building. There's so many flat roofs here. And to have the same problem everywhere is ridiculous. Whoever these roofers were had no clue what they were doing. Jeez. Oh my God, it's already leaking. So the only thing we can do at this point is replace the roof because I can't go back and weld to dirty TPL and guarantee a seal. So all I can do is replace the roof. It's, it's unfortunate, it's sad. I hate doing it this way, but we have to because there is no other option. Where did this nail come from? Whatever. Um, so as you can see here, look at all these membranes just falling apart with all the water inside of them. Jeez, fucking wheeze. Oh my God. Listen, I can't even begin to tell you guys the problems that have happened here. Now, the initial layout of the roof looks okay. And a very big prominent company showed up here before me and took a look at it and said everything was fine. I mean, they fixed a couple things that were like wrong. They put this cover tape thing here, I guess. I don't really know what they did. It's wild to me to see these kind of repairs done on a roof that someone has paid fifty to $100,000 for. Let me show you guys over here something. Now, when you see a wall, there should always be a cover board on a wall when it's touching plywood or any structural sheeting of any kind. There should always be some kind of a separator or some kind of a cover board like an ISO cover board, a dens deck, which is like a sheetrock board that goes on top of it. And the reason I say you should do this and why it's recommended is because if you nail your plywood or your structural sheeting to the wall, you're gonna have nails everywhere. So right, right here you can see a nail. Now, it looks like a nice flat wall, but the problem that they didn't account, like, account for is that the nails will eventually back out a little bit and start puncturing holes in the TPO without you ever knowing. So it won't happen now, it won't happen in five years, it might happen in six to 10 but the longevity of this roof and how it's set up is not, is not gonna hold up. That's why we use screws whenever we anchor down a roof. We don't use nails. You know, if we're, in, we're putting sheetrock or dens deck or insulation on a wall or on a roof, we always screw it because the screws don't pull out. Whereas you can see the nails right here, they're definitely gonna pull out. And I cut open the section here to see how bad it was. And it proved my point that there was no insulation on the walls. So we have to at least put a quarter to a half inch of insulation just to separate it from the nails because the nails will kill us in the end. As you can see here, that was supposed to be a welded seam and it was just glued together, so, you know. Can't teach everyone how to be a roofer. One more thing before I go, I wanna show you guys, when you're inspecting a roof, because 
the homeowner did not know that these were going to be the problems. He had no idea. He had an inspector come out, he had other roofing companies come out, and no one could find the problem. So I want to show you guys how to find a couple key problems on a roof so that that way when you're buying a house or doing a repair or looking for a problem or you're in this situation or just how to avoid the situation because of how bad this is. This hurts my soul when I see things like this, when someone paid great money and got a product that was just not cutting it. Look over here. When you get to a TPO roof, you take your probe, all right? So I got my probe here. I'm running down the seam. Everything looks okay. Ooh, a little spot right there. Okay, you see that right there? Oh, it's opening up. Oh, okay. Oh, you're getting it here. Oh, 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 that's, now you have a leak. Right in the back section of this roof here, it was a pretty big leak. And what I'm gonna show you guys here is what they use to keep it from happening. They use Tyvek tape. Ty, oh my God. And you can see the water was going through the membrane on top of the, on top of the actual, uh, oh, on top of the actual building. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh yeah, you can definitely see water got in there. All right, so I was pulling off this coping a minute ago, and then I realized after pulling this, this little bit of a TPO section they had here, I was like, wait, what's going on here? What, what is this? Zip system plywood. I have never seen it fall apart like that before. Never, like, that's ridiculous. Look at this. <laughs> like confetti. Unbelievable. There must have been some kind of a bad leak here, because look. That's the waterproof layer. I've never, ever had it fall apart like this on me ever before. Oh my God, it's, it's like this everywhere. I can't make this up. I can't stress this enough to you guys how bad this job actually was. Look, this is a new section right here. And the crazy thing is, they installed the roof backwards. They laid the roof the complete wrong direction. So they put the weldable side. So this is the side that comes without any glue right here. It's supposed to be, oh, it's two different membranes, two different brands. Oh, they mix brands. Look how soft everything is. Look, I can't make this up. Oh my God. Oh shit. Okay. Jeez. Oh no. Look at this. Look, 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 look. Oh my God. <laughs> it's softer than drywall. That's unbelievable. So we know the water is definitely coming in from the wall. It has to be coming up from up high or there has to be like some kind of percolation issue going inside the roof. But whatever it is, I'm gonna get to the bottom of it now. I'm just gonna pull off this membrane so I can start replacing plywood. I guess they welded it a little bit, but not much. Oh my God. Guys, I gotta say, this is probably the worst roof I've seen in a very long time. And the fact that it's only three years old, uh, surprises me. Yeah, that's right. Jeez, whoever this roofer was, where's the tallest tree? We're about to hang this guy. Garbage, just garbage. Oh, and the owner's here, so now I can show him how bad this really is. All right, so I was just opening up an area here on the roof to make sure that we didn't have any rot on the deck itself because I was really afraid of the zip system uh, being rotten like it is on the wall, but it seems to be pretty solid. Now. In that time I was digging through, I did a little discovery and I found a half inch ISO guard, which Firestone makes this, it's 100 PSI, um, it's 100 PSI ISO. So this is about 20 PSI and this is about 100 PSI. Now, normally what you do is you put your tapered system down and you'd put 100 PSI on top of it in case people walk on it a lot. This won't deteriorate as fast as the 20 PSI because it's a lot stronger, it's harder. It's meant as a cover board. Now, I don't know what these guys did, but they put the cover board first and then put the tapered system. So it's really backwards how they install this entire roof. Now it does nothing if you put it underneath the roof, it just makes more insulation. So um, in that case, they, they achieved one thing, better insulation, but uh, it's not protecting the 20 PSI ISO, which is not a big deal because no one comes up here anyways. They have no plans of putting up solar panels or anything like that. So it'd be an extra cost to add this, especially in Corona times. You know, we can't even get this board anymore. So it's so sad that they put it underneath the roof, not on top of it, which is wild, 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 wild. But that's what we're dealing with right now. I bring you guys along for every little detail so you guys know exactly what they did wrong. Crazy, right?